Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Garcia and the wonderful alums. I really appreciate it. Uh, I actually had a, an opportunity this week to do some reflecting about how did I get here, you know, because nobody gets here by themselves. So um, your, your video was very touching. Thank you. I have to share with my parents, okay? So you got to find a way for me to get it, okay? <laughs> my parents always enjoy seeing those highlights. Um, you know, I am so proud and excited about the fact that we have all of you here today. Uh, you are at Edmonds Community College, where our middle name is Community. And that's what we're all about. We think it's so important that we be serving the very, very different areas of our community. It doesn't matter whether it's about where your path has what path you've come from, or whether it's about your background, or whether you're the first person in your family to be in this country. It's about access, it's about success at Edmonds Community College. And this is just another way of us being able to do that. So let me begin by saying that each and every one of you, if you haven't been here before, you're gonna have a wonderful experience. Because this is a place where we look at the human person and we say, what can we do to bring you back into our community and have you be part of making changes in our community that are powerful and helpful and meaningful? So one of the things that I look at through this conference is it's about social justice and it's about equity. Every human being deserves to have a second chance. You know, we work with the Monroe Corrections Program and we also are working with some new programs here, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But we can't do it alone. So if this is your first time to be here, I hope that you're gonna get on the bandwagon with all of us in believing that we have to help our men and women that have been incarcerated and help their lives be changed by education, by life skills, by community support, all the resources that are out there that we sometimes think they should be able to find on their own when they can't. Imagine being incarcerated for a year, 20 years, 30 years. Think about how you would feel. Think about how you would try to find your way. It would be so hard. I remember when I was at South Seattle sitting next to a man and saying to him, so how did you get here? You know, how, did, how did you find your path? He worked for an agency we were working with. He was probably in his 60s. And he said to me, well, I've been incarcerated for 10 years. When my wife died, I turned to drugs, and I wasn't able to stop. Then I started selling, and I got caught. But now he was ready to make a change in his life, and he did. I truly believe that. I know from our Monroe Corrections graduations that we had a man in his 50s who had never learned to read. He was learning to read in prison. He got to prison because he signed a contract that he had no idea what he was, what he was signing off on, and yet it came back to bite him and he ended up serving in prison. And I know there's bad people that kill people that need to be in prison, but I, I often find that as I get to know the person, they made some bad choices, they had some maybe bad circumstances. I, I throw out to you the question, why do we have poverty in our country? It's not the individual, it's our systems. It's our systems that put barriers there or put limitations that don't really support the individuals that need the support. I mean, think about our keynote speaker we'll see later today at lunch, who comes from a family where his you know, father was absent, mother wasn't able to deal with being able to support him and his sister. And, and those are the circumstances that are so painful to me because we weren't there as a community to help provide that support system for individuals. So I'm gonna challenge each and every one of you after this conference that you're gonna try to make a difference as an individual and as an organization because it's so important that we do this work. I'm also gonna challenge you that if you have a boss who doesn't get it, who doesn't understand it, who thinks, well, it's, it's those people who should have known better, bring that person to one of our Monroe graduations and I'll be glad to sit next to that person and talk to that person because their lives will be changed by the stories they hear at those graduations. People in prisons are dying for knowledge. They're hungry for knowledge. And that's where education and training are so important because if we don't have this life skills training and this education shift in our society for people that have been formerly incarcerated, they're gonna go back and we don't want them going back. We want them having high paying wages, want them to be able to live comfortably 
and we also want them to be able to be passionate about their careers. And that's where I think community colleges are, are the access point, in my opinion. And then I'm going to just wrap up with talking a little bit about Edmonds Community College. I am so excited about the work that's happening here right now. And, and I want to acknowledge, you know, Gina Certain has been stellar from our campus to help organize this. I know Anna Johnson, yes, she's, I'm just really proud of her. And Anna Johnson has been also, you know, instrumental. I know, I know CPTS is also, the group has been fabulous. But I also want to acknowledge that for Mr. Joe Garcia, this has been a vision of his, and he has continued to walk his talk. He's continued, I mean, look at the size of this room. I asked him if he invited everybody on his personal contact list. <laughs> because it's about walking the talk. It's about moving forward and making it happen. But what we're doing here right now is, and I'm going to really encourage each and every one of you, and, and is President Gary Ordley here yet? Did he make it? OK, President Ordley's going to be here a little bit later. I keep talking, so you guys put pressure on President Ordley for me, OK? <laughs> is we've established a second chance scholarship on our campus for people that have been formerly incarcerated. That's given out every year, $750. It's important. You know, it used to be 500, it's 750 now. I'm hoping it gets up to 1,000 here before too long. But if you need a place to donate your money, we're a great place to think about. We also are starting to offer some great life skill programs for reentry for individuals that have been formerly incarcerated. But here's the best thing that's happened to us, I think around reentry. We just received a grant and we're going to open up a program manager position, classified staff, and it's intentionally that type of position because we're not going to require a bachelor's degree. We're going to require some college, not even requiring a two-year degree. But what I'm going to be looking for is someone who's had direct experience with our penal system. Where have you gone for a job where they said, if you've been in prison before, that's going to be counted as a positive? <laughs> We're going to make that happen. Yeah. So let's keep breaking down those barriers. Let's keep making things happen. And, and let's see where it all goes. And then if you're interested in that job, we're going to probably post in about three to four weeks, hopefully starting sometime in September. It'll be a full-time benefited job, not a bad way to go. Thank you all for being here, and I'll be seeing you throughout the next two days. Thank you.